The power steering fluid level is being adjusted. Technician A says when the power steering reservoir has been refilled the steering wheel should be turned fully in both directions with the engine running to bleed air from the system. Technician B says the low pressure return hose should be loosened with the engine running to bleed air from the system. Who is right? Only. Tech A is right because this process is necessary to bleed the air out of the system by squeezing the air out with lock to lock turns, which pushes rack pistons to their stops. Tech B is wrong because loosening the return hose will only result in a leak. It is not part of the bleeding process. The system bleeds air out by the movement of the rack piston in the power steering gear. Technician A says foaming in the remote reservoir may indicate air in the power steering fluid. Technician B says some light truck manufacturers recommend checking the power steering fluid level cold. Who is right? Only, Technician A is correct because foaming always indicates the presence of air. Tech B is wrong because all OEMs require checking power steering fluid level at operating temperature. Two technicians are discussing power steering hoses. Technician A says it is not necessary to replace a soft, spongy hose. Technician B says the low pressure return hose generally feels softer than the high pressure return hose. Who is right? B only, Tech B is correct, it is necessary to replace a soft spongy hose because it has deteriorated. Tech A is wrong because soft spongy hoses need to be replaced.
An integral, non-rack and pinion, steering gear is being removed. Technician A says oil must be drained from the pump and gear prior to removal. Technician B says you must mark the position of the steering shaft to the steering gear stub shaft when removing it. Who is right? B only. Technician B is correct because marking is necessary for proper alignment upon reassembly. Technician A is wrong because oil draining is never necessary. A sport utility vehicle using a steering column transmission shifting device has high steering effort. Technician A says this could be caused by a sheared shift tube. Technician B says the steering column assembly is misaligned. Who is right? B only. Technician B is correct because column misalignment causes high steering effort due to binding. A sheared tube will result in loss of steering ability. Tech A is wrong because a sheared shift tube will result in the inability to select gears on a vehicle with a column shifting mechanism. What is the steering condition called that causes the vehicle to jump to one side when hitting a bump in the road? Bump steer. Bump steer is the undesired condition produced when, upon hitting a bump, the vehicle darts to one side as the steering linkage is pushed or pulled as a result of the travel of the suspension. Typically, bump steer is due to a bent tie rod end or another bent component that would cause unequal heights of the tie rod ends. The tie rod end swivel joints allow the suspension to move up and down without affecting vehicle steering. B is wrong because oversteer is when the rear of the vehicle pushes the vehicle through a turn. Oversteer is a condition that occurs when the vehicle turns more sharply than the driver's steering wheel input. This happens when the rear tires lose adhesion during cornering. The rear end of the vehicle wants to swing out or is loose. If oversteer is detected, the abs will apply braking force to the outside front wheel. C is wrong because there is no condition known as near steer. D is wrong because the understeer condition occurs when the driver turns the wheel farther and the vehicle turns less sharply. It is a condition that results when the front tires lose adhesion during cornering. The vehicle wants to push, instead of turning.
Technician A says it is generally recommended that all belts, including the serpentine or poly V belts be replaced every four years. Technician B says the power steering pump pulley is replaced every five years. Who is right? Only, Technician A is correct because this is a standard industry and OEM practice. Tech B is wrong because the power steering pulley is only replaced when it is defective. Technician A says whenever working on the steering column, consult the online service information for the recommended airbag disabling procedure. Technician B says the U-joint or flexible coupling must be removed before the steering wheel can be removed. Who is right? Only. Tech A is right because you must use the manufacturer service information because if done incorrectly, it can result in airbag deployment and possible personal injury. Tech B is wrong because you do not have to remove the flexible coupling or steering U joint. Just disconnect them. A misaligned pulley on a serpentine power steering drive belt makes what type of noise whenever the engine is running? Grinding a bent or misaligned drive pulley can be caused by an accident or improper reassembly of the power steering pump and makes a grinding noise with the engine running. A misaligned pulley does not make the other noise as listed. The grinding noise comes from the ribs grinding against the pulley. Steering dampers can be used to reduce excessive positive caster. High positive caster places the top of the wheel high. So, if it lifts too high, it will cause wheel kickback and a steering damper is used to reduce wheel kickback. <laughs> 